Hi everyone, I'm here today to talk to you about the VT8460 engine that was an RM50. Uh, lots of you have been following our progress and um, this update has been requested several times so here I am. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little bit of history. Um, coming to USA were the guys that developed and manufactured the VT8 series engines. Um, it's a whole family of engines, it's not just a 460, there's others as well. And I think probably what I'll do to begin with is I'll explain uh, what the acronym stands for, the VT8 bit. Um, I think that's probably the best. So it's a VT8 and the V stands for the configuration, so it's a V type engine. The T stands for turbo, the 8 refers to the number of cylinders in the block, okay? So basically it's a turbo V8. And the three digits at the end, the 460 in our case, actually refers to the output. So it refers to the horsepower, and, and that's why they are named that way. So it actually gives you the specifics of the engine before you begin. Okay, so Cummins, as I said, were the guys that developed the engine and manufactured it. Um, the family of engines were first developed in 1952, and that started with the VT8 350. Um, and then it was upgraded ever so slightly to become the VT8 430. And the 430 was, was a truck engine basically. Um, lots of kind of heavy haulage was used for that engine. And then the guys at Cummings basically decided to try and up it again um, to become the VT8 460, which is a tank, which is a tank engine we have. And the reason I call it the tank engine is because in actual fact the VT8 460 was almost exclusively used by the military. Um, it didn't do very well on city streets. Uh, it basically ended up in M50s, M51s, and US amphibious vehicles. Uh, it, it was probably the size of it that made it unpopular, but for a tank, it's, it's not so much of a problem because there's plenty of room. <laughs> okay. So, we have now got to the point where we have started to rebuild our VT8 460 and we've been working really hard to find lots of spare parts. Um, our tank engine has suffered quite a bit of damage with the cold. Um, spare parts, as I said, of, of what we've been lacking and what we've been finding, um, because it was a military en engine only, there wasn't very many of them made. Um, so, of course, that then leads to them not being very many spare parts. Um, we've been very lucky. Um, we've been able to find the parts uh, improvement bulletins, which were released by Cummins. And basically what's happened is when Cummins have developed the engine and tried to increase the horsepower from the 430 to the 460, um, they've basically gone in and messed about with every bit of the engine to, to basically upgrade it and make it more powerful to get that extra bit of horsepower. And we've been lucky because we've then been able to find the PIBs and we've been able to source the part numbers. So we've found pretty much everything we need now. And the last bit of our restoration really was repair of the block. Um, our block has suffered quite badly from cold. It got frosted at some point. We don't know when that happened. Um, for all I know, it's the reason the tank was stopped in the first place. It could have happened when it was over in the UK, or it could have happened here, for all we know. Um, we don't think it did. We just, we, we can't, we was absolutely, it's all a guess. So we've decided to repair it. And we've now got a, a quick video from David Drinks, and he's gonna show you exactly how you repair a, a cracked block. I uh, hope you find it interesting. So this still in the head here, which has been pressure tested, uh, and we've located all the cracks. If you can see closer there, they've now been centre punched, which is ready um, to be drilled. And then each place is tapped. Um, and then one of these special screws is put in, which when it gets tight, it's a taper, snap off. Mm -hmm. um, and then you would peen it over. If we can go have a look at a the bit of the head that's done, you can see then the finish is up. And once it's all done, there in place, the studs, it, it's, it's all peened over and you can't really tell whether the stitching's been done. So that's how neat a job it is. Uh, this head that's been done, we, we did that several times because once we've 
seal the cracks that are leaking, some other cracks appear that are leaking, so you're always chasing. So in that head I showed you originally, there's around about 175 of them studs in there. You can't really see now, but uh, you've got some pictures that you can see before the damage. But all this area now has been packed, put back together with a, a mixture of brazing and stitching. Um, so all that's done. You can't tell from outside again. Hopefully it'll run forever now. So now that Dave has explained how the block has been fixed, um, I'm going to explain to you why. Um, lots of you will be asking, why didn't we just put a modern day V8 diesel in? You know, it's only 460 brake. We probably wouldn't need 460 brake anyway to keep our tank running. Um, and the answer is quite simply, uh, our tank is an M50. It was upgraded by the Israelis with a Cummins VT8 460 in. And we are a heritage restoration. And it's important to us, um, it's a, a, one of our, our top priority, to keep the history accurate and to keep history alive. Um, yeah, we could have scrapped the engine, but we would never have done that. We never will do that. And so we are probably taking the more difficult route to try and fix our engine and, and keep it all as it should be. Um, I hope lots of you will, will get quite a lot of enjoyment from the next video, which will hopefully be me next to a running VT8460. So we'll see you all again soon.